share some of the most coveted experiences in travel. Riding an elephant is, is big on many people's bucket list. Bathing an elephant, watching animal performances like elephants in shows. Moments designed to soothe the soul and garner a selfie. But the treatment of some of these animals behind the scenes can be alarming, like four-year-old Mina the elephant. There was a chain around her leg that had spikes in it. Chained to a pole with spikes sticking into her skin. Mina has had a spiked chain around her ankle since we last left her. For more than a year and a half, National Geographic writer Natasha Daly <sighs> Jesus and photographer Kirsten Luce traveled across four continents, uncovering how the pursuit of likes can come at a heavy cost to animals. What we found is that what happens behind the scenes in order to get that animal docile enough to interact with a person often involves fear-based training. Obviously not something that the general public is aware of. Her reporting featured in this month's National Geographic magazine, exposing the hidden cost of wildlife tourism. Since 2014, the number of, of animal selfies that people have posted has grown almost 300%. The experience for the traveler, she found, is often fueled by an obsession with selfies. The sheer number of people now not only posting their travel experiences, but consuming others' travel experiences means that these things are spread in an instant. Tell me about the impact of the selfie. Yeah. Clearly, the wildlife selfie is what's driving a lot of this demand. Absolutely. So people would once learn about these experiences in guidebooks or through word of mouth. But now all you have to do is open your Instagram feed. By posting these experiences online, it serves as viral advertising almost. And because these photos come across as, you know, benign, you may not realize through one second of scrolling that this experience might involve these, this dark side. It's that dark side that she says she uncovered in Thailand. And what we found is that elephants, in order to get to give those rides, they are trained from a young age. And often this training is fear-based. So elephants will be trained with uh, a wooden stick with a metal hook at the end called a bull hook. They're trained to be compliant, to, to follow the, the commands of this hook. I'm here at um, Mid Tamon Elephant Camp in Chiang Mai. Tell me about Mina, the elephant that you encountered. Mina is a four-year-old elephant that I encountered at an elephant camp outside of Chiang Mai, Thailand. And what caught my attention was that her mahout, her trainer, had a nail in his hand that he was pushing behind her ear to sort of make her compliant and make her do the brush strokes. After the show, we walked over to where she was being kept. There was a chain around her leg that had spikes in it. The spikes were all the way around pressing into her skin. She was kind of hovering it in the air because obviously it hurts to put weight on it. I asked her trainer, you know, why she was in the, in the spiked shackle and he said, she's naughty and she tends to kick. So this, this kind of teaches her not to. She says the trainer told her that the chain only stays on for a little while before being removed. With permission from the camp, we actually returned at night. I found that Mina was still in her spiked shackle. It's about 7.30 PM and you can see it's getting dark and it's pouring rain. Mina has had a spiked chain around her ankle since we last left her. Um, this is the first time I sort of witnessed a deception that can go on in this industry. Uh, you spoke with the owner, and what did she tell you about the condition the elephants she keeps? She did say that, you know, Mina has behavioral problems, but she noted that since she had been kept on the spike shackle, her behavior had improved. So it indicated that, you know, yes, this, this condition is something that may be done in order to kind of correct elephants' behavior. And in a message from the general managers online, they state, at Metamon, we are concerned about the welfare of domesticated elephants and are constantly trying to improve their environment. But wildlife tourism isn't limited to the far reaches of the world. Here in the U.S., only 18 states have a total ban on keeping exotic wildlife. Many have partial restrictions, and four states have no restrictions at all. There are thousands of wild animals being kept in backyards, on display in makeshift zoos. It's an issue that recently came to a head in Florida. At Dade City Wild Things outside of Tampa, tourists could pay $200 to swim with baby tigers. In this video, taken by PETA, a cub can be seen struggling to swim. The footage prompted an investigation into animal cruelty by authorities and the USDA. The owner of the facility spoke with ABC's Tampa affiliate about the allegations. The reason we like to do swims for the benefit of the animal, it's hot. Have you been outside? It's hot. You want to get in the pool. We want to get in the pool. So it's a really great time for the tiger to have fun. 
the Swimming with Tigers attraction was shut down by the USDA in 2017. And many of the tigers have ended up here, at the Wild Animal Sanctuary outside Denver. Oh, I know. We haven't eaten in years. Uh -huh. These two tigers are part of um, 39 tigers that we got from Oklahoma, where 19 of them actually started down in a place in Dade City, wow. Florida, where people could pay to play with tiger cubs and swim with them. They're no longer kept in cages. Now they're able to roam free. The 10,000-acre sanctuary is home to over 500 animals that have been rescued from what they say are situations of exploitation. <laughs> Pat Craig founded the sanctuary 39 years ago. Every rescue we go on is pretty iconic and amazing. Every animal we see is usually pretty close to death and we have to hurry up and get them out of there and nurse them back to health. He tells us that Dade City isn't the only facility keeping big cats in the U.S. According to the WWF, there are approximately 5,000 tigers held in captivity in the United States. But only roughly 300 of those tigers are in zoos. There are now more tigers in the U.S. than there are in the wild, where only 3,800 roam free. Well, right now in the United States, there's still well over 20,000 lions, tigers, and bears that are outside of the zoo system. It's still a pretty big epidemic here in the United States. Good morning, and what a strange and mm -hmm. scary story breaking right now in central Ohio. It's basically a big game hunt. In 2011, over 49 animals were killed in Zanesville, Ohio. Lions, tigers, bears, and wolves brought down after they were released by the owner of a private animal reserve. The massacre prompting Ohio officials to change the laws in that state, banning the possession of dangerous wild animals. That crackdown leaving many bears in need of rescue. All of these bears, along with the neighboring habitats, both in that direction and in this direction, are all bears that were rescued from the state of Ohio. Many of the bears arrived malnourished, but now they appear healthy and happy. They're probably some of our most enjoyable animals. Once they get here and they're in a safe situation, they just enjoy life. At this sanctuary, they say the health and well-being of the animals is their top priority. Here, visitors walk across an elevated bridge to prevent the animals from undue stress, and they can only be observed from a distance. It's a feature highlighted in one of Daly's articles, How to Do Wildlife Tourism Right, providing tips for ethical wildlife tourism, recommending that tourists do some research ahead of time, look for red flags like animals who are visibly injured or forced to participate in activities that could injure them, and seek experiences that offer observation of animals engaging in natural behaviors in natural environments. It's important to know that the phrase wildlife tourism isn't necessarily a negative thing. Right. Um, but what you really want to look at are the experiences that are being offered. At the end of the day, is the selfie worth it? So that's something that people have to decide for themselves. Is getting that perfect selfie that may be a once in a lifetime experience for you worth potentially contributing to an industry where an animal is suffering? for that photo. This whole industry is so driven by consumer demand. So the experiences that are on offer cater to what people will pay for. You have the power to change things. Your individual decisions actually have a great deal of impact. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.